Hey everyone, so today I'm in the Lumsdale Valley near Matlock in Derbyshire, Peak District and I've come in search of the six ancient mills which lay along the valley. Well, some of them aren't ancient, they're a little bit more newer than the others. The first one we're looking for is the bone mill. And the bone mill was used to basically crush bones, animal bones. Ooh, I wonder if it even meant human bones. You never know, do you? And it was to turn this into fertilizer. And I'm stood right beside that very mill. There's not much remaining of this one. I think this is the one that's in the worst derelict condition. And it was built in the 15th century and it was eventually abandoned in the 1920s. So I'm going to follow this path around. I believe the wheel pit may be still visible just around here. Yeah, here we go, look. So here's the old wheel pit from the mill. It's quite deep still, isn't it, with the stonework on both sides. And around the side of it, we can still see some of the stone side wall just there. Look at that. Isn't that just... That's amazing, isn't it? Around about 500 years old. That is absolutely astonishing. So you can hear the sound of running water, so we are going to be following the course of the Lumsdale Falls as well. I'll take you around to where those two gateposts are. Just here, and we can have a look here as well. Look more well overgrown, mossed up stone walling just there. And there's those two gateposts which was most likely some kind of entrance way to the mill itself. So we'll walk through there as they would have done back in the day and see more stone ruins. So around about a hundred years, this has been laid dormant and neglected and derelict. I think if I climb over here carefully and not sink into bracken, I can take you to the other side of the wheel pit. There we go. Just there in the centre of the shot we could probably pick up where the wheel may have sat, some kind of bracket maybe, I don't know, or is that an inlet for water? Some more stone ruins right beside the little area we've just been looking at, look. So the second mill is a heck of a lot newer than the first one we've just been looking at. It was built in the 1850s and initially it was also a grinding mill and it later saw use as a sawmill. Now this one is protected by fencing as you can understand because it is a protected area. I'm going to show you this bit first. Look at this. And that stone wall is just preserved as something like an underground pathway leading down there. You can see it has been recently fenced off and just beyond this one immediately you can see the third one the third mill and through the trees there is a chimney just there so i'm going to head on away from the pond that we've just been looking at and make my way down and we'll get another quick look at number two before moving on to mill number three look at this beautiful chimney i'm unsure whether it's capped off at the top it may well be and this was to do with the underground heating system to dry out the minerals in mill number three, which is just over this side. We'll take you over and have a little look. Now, unfortunately, this is the closest we are going to get. Now, it's originally known as the paint mill because of its use of grinding for the paint industry. But it was also used as lead smelting mill to grind corn and also as a bleaching mill 
That is brilliant, isn't it? So we've got that half of the building over there and there's another half just down there. It's such a shame. Now, a little way down from that chimney, there's a few steps and just this curious hole in the ground covered in huge pieces of stone. And it goes in both directions. So there's some cottages under renovation just there. Is this some sort of water or heat transfer which escaped from that chimney? I've got the torch with me. We'll shine it up. So that's lining it up quite well. And there's quite an incline there. I mean, you could crawl that. It's very, very mucky. Very, very ashy. So it would seem to me that this was in fact some sort of escape for the soot. But what would it do? Would it just rise out of here? It's very peculiar. If we look in the opposite direction, are we going to see pretty much the same? It does indeed. You can just see beyond that cobweb. There we go, that's better, isn't it? And it looks like a pretty similar depth. It just goes on and on and on. So as I say previously, the chimney is just out of sight behind that tree. So this is the course it takes and it seems to pretty much follow the course of the path. It continues underground, so I'm not sure what that opening would have been for, whether it was to allow fumes or heat to get out. So it's got to be... So there's those cottages under restoration just there. And the path goes down here, so where it goes is absolutely anyone's guess. And at the very bottom you're left with this, so farm, you've got the road here and a few buildings and houses. No trace of where that may have reappeared. in pretty good condition isn't it i believe this one's been protected and the decline of these buildings has been halted by the arkwright society so well done to them And this is the fourth mill built in the 1700s. And on the side there is where I believe the mill wheel was properly situated, right next to the most beautiful waterfall. Deserves very, very well, isn't it?
this beautiful otherworldly building look at it look at that archway in the central area and the doorway on the top right and it's the remains of bleaching vats it was a bleach mill and it was linked to the first one down at the bottom which was the garden mill apparently it's got an ingenious train system remains some old railway lines look at it doesn't it just look like something from another country just in center of shot just there look you can see an archway a doorway into the hillside wonder what lays in there and how far it went i believe this one was built in the early 1700s and the one it's joined on to was built in the late 1700s let's see if we can go and find any remains of that ingenious railway so here it is look there's the remains of that railway what a brilliant idea to transfer cotton from the upper mill to the lower mill that appears to be all that was present i expect it's underneath the what looks like a recently tarmac surface as well because there's the upper mill through there you can't really see much from that shot and the lower mill is just down there so the tracks would have gone straight across here and out the other side long before this wall would have gone up old brackets there on the side of this look one there and one at the bottom take you along the wall we can give you a view of the sixth and final mill we're looking at today a bit of sunshine glare there we go those railway tracks which would have been used to transfer would have come out just there and somewhere around here this is what it looks like around the back of the lower bleaching mill huge stone wall with the brook coming out that once served this heavy industry behind it well i really hope you enjoyed that as much as i did the beautiful lumsdale valley six mill ruins and the remains and some of them in astoundingly good condition and the oldest one dating back almost 500 years brilliant i love stuff like that and if you like stuff like that please like comment and subscribe drop your suggestions down below thank you very much from the lumsdale valley in derbyshire near matlock goodbye for now <laughs>